So it's lunchtime out here in the woods and I thought this is probably a good opportunity to share with you my newest cook kit. This is the three piece cook kit from Keith Titanium. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this, keep watching. All right, so you know, I, I have a good working relationship with Keith Titanium. I have reviewed a number of their products, some of which my viewers have said that's a great piece of kit, and some of which they said that's just outrageously expensive. No argument here. Uh, the value is the perception of the person purchasing it, isn't it? Okay, but this is something different. I think this is definitely most people are going to find a, a great value to be honest this is not something i would have asked for this is something i was looking for something else they said we don't have that in stock would you consider taking this one instead and once i took a look at it i thought i'll give it a try i'm ever glad i did this has a whole lot going for it it's become my primary piece of cook kit at least for now and i thought i would share my experiences with you so what i'll do is i'll just bring the camera in a little closer we'll go over the specifications for this and each of the features that it has and then of course i'll cook my lunch in it and you can see it working all right so here's the kit all compacted down ready for storage this is the stuff sack that came with it just a nice ultra light nylon stuff sack does the job of keeping everything contained in one spot and your keeps your bag from getting dirty from any soot on the bottom of this all right so let's go through the specifications for this as best i can and again all this will be in the video description below so main pot the main pot is in the center let me remove the top one so you can see there are two pots and a pan. So this is, I consider, the main pot. So this is a 40.6 fluid ounce pot or 1200 milliliters. And that is pretty much right up to that rim right there. So you really don't want to go much greater than that. 4.4 ounces, 125 grams for that pot by itself. The next pot, a little bit smaller in terms of its volumes, 27 fluid ounces, 800 milliliters. It comes in at 3.5 ounces or 100 grams, another very lightweight one. And then finally, I considered this a fry pan, but they did give the volumes for it. So 13.5 fluid ounces or 400 milliliters. It weighs 2.5 ounces or 79 70 grams. All right, so the total weight of this whole kit with the stuff sack is 10.8 ounces or 307 grams. Very, very lightweight. Diameter very quickly, and I'll go with the largest uh, pot because that's the one that, you know, you fit everything in, which is um, 4.2 inches in diameter, 133 millimeters. And I guess if you put it all together again like this, it's 5.4 inches to the very top, 138 millimeter. So very compact indeed. All right, so as I mentioned, it is made from food grade titanium. It does have photo butterfly handles on the sides and they have the silicone tubing on the outsides. And as you can see, I have been using this over small wood stoves. I wouldn't put this necessarily over a big open fire. Uh, only reason being is because of those silicones. Uh, not the end of the world if they burn off. In fact, you could probably remove them if you really want to, but uh, they're nice to hold on to when you go to use the pan. So here's what I thought I would do today. I'm going to use all three for the demonstration, at least two of them in this video, and that is I'm going to cook a soup up in this one. I'm going to fry an egg in this one, but not the way you would traditionally would, a little bit different. And then, of course, this is going to boil my water for my coffee. All right, let's get this lunch going. And my stove setup for today is a Boundless Voyage wood gas stove and a Boundless Voyage alcohol stove, both made of titanium. Still doing testing out. I'm not ready to do a review on them, but I will be at a future point. So let's just get the water on to boil while I get the rest of the ingredients for it. I mean, very simple, right? So I've got my water on here. Take the little pan off of the top. And instead of putting it on in this direction, it fits on so well in this direction, and that's all you need to do. Now, it's going to take a few minutes, obviously, for that water to come up to temperature. And in the meantime, I'll get the materials for my soup ready, and I'll put them in. Uh, I just wanted to be able to show you this in action. So once the soup is on, I'll bring it back, and we'll go on from there. Guess I wasn't paying close enough attention to my lunch. It got warm enough that... I actually had a boil over on the sides, but uh, uh, nothing stuck to the pot, which is what I was just concerned about here. All right, let me pour that into the bowl. 
If you're interested, this is another one of my test recipes for the herbs worst. And uh, I'll leave it at that. If you're interested, uh, just look up the term herbs worst. I haven't perfected the recipe enough yet to bring it to you uh, as a video, but I will at some point, of course. All right, so once I have consumed this, what is very hot soup right now, then I'm going to go on to cooking an egg in this little pan. All right, I think I'm ready to go on to the next uh, stage of my meal, which is to fry myself up an egg. Now, I guess you really can't honestly call this frying. It's more of, well, it's not poaching because it's not in water. It's more of, uh, it's not sous vide, but it's going to be in a double boiler. So you can see I've got a pot of water on the boil here. That water will remain clean. That'll be my coffee water. But in the top, in the little pan, invert it like that. I'm going to drop a little bit of, I guess it's going to be olive oil. Butter would have been nicer for this, but olive oil works just fine. Just going to let that spread around. I'm not even sure that this is absolutely necessary, but uh, it's one way of ensuring that things don't stick. All right, so the olive oil is all around the pan. Let's see if I can crack this egg without cracking the yolk. All right, so egg is in. I see I'm a little bit off-centered. I think that's okay, but the yolk is kind of tilted to one side, so I have a little bit of a tilt going on here. But already you can start to see the uh, white is turning white. It's starting to cook up. Now, I will say I've done this before. It won't cook up as quickly as if I was doing this over direct heat, but you're not going to burn it. I can tell you that. It's not going to burn. So I'm just going to give this a few more minutes. And uh, you know what? I forgot to bring out a flipper. I'm hoping I can do this with a spoon. All right, I'll, when it's time to flip this over, uh, that's when I'll bring it back. Okay, I'm not too sure how well this is going to work because that's what I'm using, right? Not the best choice for a flipper. But as you can see, the oils kept everything from sticking. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, my yolk is broke. Oh, well. Let's flip it anyway. Finish it off. Just a couple more seconds. If I'd brought a flipper, I think I could have got under it better than a spoon. But I've already put my salt and garlic and some uh, chili flakes on top of it. So it's only going to take a second now. I can do this. Put my stainless steel plate. I need a titanium plate, you know, but a stainless steel plate I can put on top just to kind of reserve the heat in a little bit and cook up quickly. So give me a minute and I'm sure that egg will be ready and I'll take it off. Okay then, only a minute or two later. My egg is definitely cooked and not stuck. Maybe one little spot where I didn't get the oil to match up. I'm just going to put that on my plate. Great way to top off the soup I cooked. And as you can see, my water is boiling hard here. So I can do one of two things. I can either clean up with that water or make coffee. You know what choice I'm going to make. All right, let me finish this lunch off and we'll wrap this video up. All right, a few closing thoughts on the Keith Titanium three-piece quick set. You know, as I mentioned when I opened this video, it's not something I would have thought to ask for from Keith, but when they offered it to me and I accepted it, boy, am I ever glad I did. It really has become my primary cook set, for, at least for right now, uh, especially as we move into a burn ban and I'm not allowed to use an open fire. This really is going to show its uh, versatility off. In terms of versatility, you get those two pots and this little pan, fry pan, if you will, or lid, as I demonstrated works well for both. Set it up as a double boiler. Yeah, it's just, it's a versatile little kit. I like that I can use this pot for cooking up my soup and of course that's going to leave the pot dirty and uh, I don't have to worry about cleaning it out before I have my coffee. In fact, I can uh, boil enough water inside of the larger pot and then I can have my coffee, then have hot water for cleaning out this pot. And one of the things I liked about it, and I wasn't sure this would work, but as you saw how well it does work, is to be able to use this not only as a lid, but then as a double boiler, works well enough for at least cooking eggs. I will use this over open flame at some point, but that works so well. Uh, why would I want to do that when I have the option of doing it this way? Yeah, just a nice kit in terms of its versatility, 
especially given the weight of this thing. And uh, yeah, so I think it's worth taking a look at. I'll provide the links to Keith Titanium where if you want to take another look at this and all the specifications, of course, will be in the video description. If you have any comments or any questions around this kit, then please put those in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.